close your eyes and pull like a dog. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarthy. Before we kick things off, I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. What a weekend of championship action we have just had the privilege of enjoying. There was ecstasy, there was agony, there were joyous scenes and there was immeasurable heartbreak. On today's podcast we're going to look back on a weekend that included famous wins for the Clonakilty footballers and the Castlehaven ladies alongside devastating losses for the Castlehaven men as well as both the Dohanese men's and ladies footballers. There was also a day to forget for Island Rovers who were relegated from the Premier Senior Football Championship. In a few moments we're going to chat to Clonakilty's Dennis Murphy following on from their sensational Premier Senior Football semi-final victory over Douglas at Park Aquive which secured the Brewery Towns passage to the county final where they'll clash with the Bars. We'll also touch base with Kilbritton hurler Nick O'Donovan ahead of his side's Lower intermediate county final at Park Aquive against Liz Gould this Saturday afternoon. But Kieran, first things first, try and sum up last week's action from a West Cork perspective. And maybe the place to start is with that all time modern club classic between Castlehaven and the Bars, which was part of the double header at Park Aquive, because that game had absolutely everything. You could ever dream from a club county semi-final it was a game for the ages jack an absolutely incredible game of football and um, top class skill drama excitement heartbreak joy penalty shootout um everything everything a game could have last minute 45s clutch kicks jesus and Stephen Sherlock getting 210, Brian Hurley getting 29 between them, 419 between the, the bars and Haven hot shots. Like you said, it's a it's a game that had absolutely everything. And at the end of it, it's heartbreak for Haven. And it's just funny how sport works. If we go back 12 months ago, the bars and Haven met at the same stage in the Premier Senior Football semi final. And that day, and it was in Parky Ring um, the, the, that evening, that game went to a sudden death in the penalty shootout after the teams couldn't be separated in normal time and extra time. And again, last Sunday, there was no separating these two heavyweights. They slugged it out in Parky Cueve. It was, it was a heavyweight tie that will live in the memory of everyone who was there. Um, and again, couldn't be separated, normal time, extra time. And again, into a penalty shootout and John Kerrans, the, the Bears goalkeeper, became the hero. He saved uh, saved the Haven penalty and then scored the winning one himself. So it's the Bears that go through to the county final against Clon. But you have to feel for the Haven. You have to, because they put everything on the line. And we were so close to that Dream <coughs> West Cup final that we spoke about last week. That would have been manna from, from Haven for us to have Haven and Clon in there together. Instead, it, it's Bears and Clon, a repeat of the of group games from the last couple of years, but Haven died with their boots on, and Haven being the Haven, they're going to bounce back. Um, county finalists last season, county semi-finalists this season, they showed enough again last Sunday to say that they'll be in the reckoning. Um, and when Brian Hurley's in that form, man, he's just incredible to watch. He is. He's sen- <clears throat> he's sensational. His free taking is top class. His scores from play from any angle are just a joy to behold, and he's a. Uh, lethal finisher when he's in shooting range for a goal so yeah just absolutely a joy to watch as you say that game was a modern classic as we've described Clonakilty's win though they won by a point in reality it was a lot more comfortable I would suggest the goal that Douglas got late on from the penalty spot probably came from what looked like a dive to me on the Irish Examiner (laughs) live stream. So I think... Tell us what you really think, Jay. (laughs) I think it should have been a more comfortable win than the scoreline suggested for Clannacilty. They they were very impressive. Yeah, Clannacilty won in the end. It was 15 points to 111. And it was quite a convincing one-point win. Like you said there, uh, Douglas struck for 1-1 in injury time. 
when Clan were five points up down the home stretch, they, they looked home and hose. They looked so, so comfortable. And this is Clan's best performance of the season. And, and we touched it in last week's podcast with Holly O'Sullivan. <laughs> this is a Clan team that's building. Um, when you go back to last year's um, county championship, Clan didn't even get out of their group. But this year, they got out of the group. They won their quarterfinal. Now they won their semifinal. And Clan are back in the county senior football final for the first time since 2009. And they deserve to be there. Uh, their, their first half performance at times last Sunday against Douglas was superb, sensational football. Um, what I like about this clan team is they've such a solid platform to build on. Uh, six of that back seven have played inter county for Cork at some level. And Thomas Clancy was a rock again the last day. Liam O'Donovan and Sean White in the half back line were superb. It was probably Sean White's best ever game for Clan of Kilty, and that's saying something. He got a point there in the second half like the 70, 80 yard dash up the sideline and he finished. Um, that was for, for Clan's 13 point. Like it was yeah, incredible. That was an abs- yeah. Oh, it was a cracker. An, an inspirational score, but he was at that all day. He was just, he was immense. And then you've that midfield pairing of Grimes and Ridgeway who are so solid. And then I think a big plus for Clan up front. Um, we touched it before. Darrow Shea is their top scorer by some distance. And he got six points the last day, five from freeze. But what was so encouraging for Clan is that Sean McAvoy scored four points from play and Ross Mannix chipped in with two points. And Clan will lead that going forward. They can't rely on Darrow Shea all the time to, 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 to score the winning points. But for McAvoy and, and Mannix to chip in with six points between them, is um, it's, a, it, it's a big positive going into the county final. And award two for David Lowney. I thought he was really, really good. Um, such a such a, an important outlet and, and a valuable kind of outball for Clan, and he got through the amount of work the last day. So a lot of positives for, for Clan going into the county final against the Bears. And the last time Clan were in the county final, like I said, was 2009. The team they beat in 2009 were the Bears. In 2009, Clan beat to Hello on their way to the county final. And in charge of Clan in 2009 was Harley O'Neill, and he is back in the hot seat this year. I'm not saying it's, it's an omen, but it has to be. So you're not saying it's an omen, but it has to be. So you are saying it's an omen. But anyway, look, we're going to come back to Clonakilty's um, win over Douglas in a few moments. And we're going to be joined by Clonakilty's <coughs> Dennis Murphy to talk through the game and to look ahead to the final. But at the other end of the Premier Senior Football Championship, Kieran, Island Rovers' time in this grade is over. They were beaten by Carrigaline in the relegation playoff on a scoreline of 110 to 10 points. So huge disappointment for Island Rovers who end the season knowing that they'll be playing senior A football next year. I was surprised <coughs> that Island lost this game, to be honest. I thought they would have too much for, for Carrigaline. Uh, but Carrigaline, for, from all for, from all accounts and from talking to people who were there, were well deserving of the win. Carrigaline got a late goal that, that's condemned Island down to the, the senior A football championship for, for next year. And I know in last week's podcast, I was saying that I think that like Island were good enough to stay up in the Premier Senior, but obviously going on the result of last last weekend, they weren't. And, and I suppose and if you look at the cold facts over the last two seasons, they've played eight games in the Premier Senior Football Championship and they've lost seven. Um, and the one lost, victory was in last year's relegation playoff. Re- relegation finals. So um, they've lost their six group games in the two seasons. So when you look at it like that, I don't think that they can have too many complaints that they're going down to Senior A. But now that they're down in Senior A, it's a very important moment for the club because they can go one of either two ways now. Um Jason Whaley, the, the manager, was saying this year that, that Ireland are just lacking in that confidence and self-belief because they're not winning championship games. Now they're down at, at, at a level where they can hold their own. Maybe it's a chance to regroup, win a couple of championship games and build something and come forward. And just looking at the Donnies there, for the first time in years, Donnies won three championship games this year, got to the County Senior A semi-final. I know they lost to Michaels the last day, but Donnies have enough there to build on for, for next year because they got to the last four and they have, they know, They've won games this year at Senior A, so Ireland could do something similar next year, find their feet at Senior A, win a couple of games and rebuild from there again because they have some really good players there. Like we mentioned before, Dan McOwen, Sean Donovan, Stephen Leonard, Peter Driscoll, they're really, really good players. I know they're tight for numbers in Ireland and, and that, that, is a, that is a concern. So the hope is that they can regroup and put a huge effort in, in, into, into next season and see where that takes them. Um, obviously, they're going to be disappointed now losing their Premier Senior status. But in the long run, maybe it's a blessing because if we're being quite honest here now as well, Ireland weren't going to win a Premier Senior Football Championship <clears> in the next couple of years. That 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 grade is so competitive now and the teams are so good. Ireland are, 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 
in the bottom half of the of the teams up there. So now they're down senior rate, they're at a they're at a better standard for them where they can hold their own. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond and bounce back from this. Well, you mentioned one of their potential opponents next season, and that is the Dohnies who crashed out at the semi-final stage. They were beaten by St. Michael's on a scoreline of 114 to 14 points after extra time. And though they'll also be disappointed that their season is at an end here. And you mentioned they won three games on the bounce this season. So overall, when they look back on their work this season, they'll be quite pleased, won't they? I think so. Like I said there, for the first time in years, they've won three championship games together. They'll be um, so disappointed with how that semi-final unfolded in Parky Creeve on Saturday night. They were winning in injury time, in normal time, and somewhere, somehow, um, the, this um, the referee let the game play on. Um, there was only meant to be two minutes of injury time, and I think it was the third or fourth minute that Michaels got the equaliser that put the the game into extra time, and it was um, it, w- it was Michaels that kicked on then. But Mark Buckley was outstanding again. Um, they missed Fionn Hurley. He was missing the game through injury, and he was a big blow because he's worth a couple of points to to Donnie's. But as disappointed as as they will be, at least going into the 2022 campaign, they have a very solid platform to build on. So that's a that's a that's a silver lining to a disappointing begin for them. And finally, Kieran, before we go back to the Clonakilty win, we have to touch on another absolute classic: the ladies' junior A county final between Castlehaven and again Doheny's. And once more, this was a game that went all the way, still level after extra time, but instead of penalties, they had a thirty-meter free shootout. And I won't. I don't know if we'd call it controversial ending, but there was some confusion maybe with how the game ended and that ultimately left Castlehaven, the victors, and a very disappointed and wrecked Dottony side who had stuck with them throughout the game. In keeping with the, the team of last weekend, there was drama in, in abundance here across all the all the big championship games involving West Cork teams, there was some degree of drama and it was all packed into this Castlehaven and Donnie's County Junior A ladies football final. There was no separating these two teams after normal time and extra time. So it went to, uh, it went to shootout, but in, in ladies football, it's a 30 metre free shootout. Um, and even after the first five, there was still no separating them. And it went into sudden death then and talking to German McCarthy, who was covering the game for us, he said the tension up there was incredible because um, most of the kicks were missed and it was just adding to the tension and putting the pressure on, on, on the next kicker and the next kicker. And Donnie's thought they'd won it. Wood Collins scored her free, but then after it went over, she was deemed to have stepped inside the line. And next thing that free was um that free was was uh, was wiped out, it was cancelled. So the, the sudden death went on. Then it was 18th century, the Haven fullback um, became Haven's hero, and she got the winning score there. But you have to feel for Donnie's uh what, what a cruel way to, to lose a county football final, especially for those couple of seconds when they thought they'd won it, to go from that high to that low in a matter of minutes. Like, it's incredibly hard to deal with. Um, but for, for Haven now there, it's just a superb story. Castle Haven have won county C, B and A junior titles in the last three years. And now they're going up to intermediate and they're in the Munster Championship action. This weekend, they're taking on the Waterford champion St. Anne's in Mallow, I think it is. Um, so their their adventure, their season is is continuing. Um, but what uh, what another incredible incredible game! So heartbreak for the Donnies in two games this weekend on a boat on Saturday up in the city. Um, but the Castle Haven ladies, at least they they are they've given something in the parish to celebrate, and it's it's a terrific win as well. Great stuff, Kieran. Well, one more game that we might come back to later in the show, but probably worth mentioning here before we wrap up the weekend roundup is Randlogue's mm-hmm. victory over Goline. And this was their first ever win at this level. So a historic day for Randlogue, but massive disappointment for Goline as well. A huge win for Randlogue. And, and the big prize for this is they're now going to be a junior A club next year. And, and that's what they wanted for some time. Uh, they beat Goline 210 to 16 on Saturday afternoon afternoon up in Parky Ring and um, this is a repeat of the, the Carberry Junior B football final a couple of weeks ago and Randall's won that as well um, from talking to Noel Horgan who's our reporter there he said Randall's were well worth the win he said teenager Sean Daly was, was a class act on show a corner forward he said it whenever he got the ball he caused Goline no end of 
of, of trouble. And even looking at the scores, the scores here, yeah, it's just Randall's they got um they got a penalty in the just looking, just reading through the report here, they got a, got a penalty in the second half and that just pushed them forward and they just didn't look back after that. So Goleen really pushed them, pushed them all the way, but Randalls were quite deserving winners. So they're they're going junior A for next year. So there'll be fierce celebrating in, in Randalls right now. But this is a club and a team that's been on the go. Jesus, is it 17 or 18 weeks almost in a row between the two codes? And they still have a couple of, of titles left to, left to play for. So it's an, it's an incredible story what Randalls are, are doing right now. And then I'll have still to show for it. Yeah, absolutely. So congratulations to Randalls and hopefully we'll speak to one or two of their players on the podcast in the coming weeks to reflect on what has been a brilliant season for the club. But Kieran, let's switch our attentions back to Clonakilty's win over Douglas now and chat to Dennis Murphy. We're joined now on the podcast by Dennis Murphy, a kind of kilty senior footballer who's out injured at the moment. We're going to look back in a, a super Sunday for Clown Up and Party Cueve. They booked their, their ticket to the, the county football final in two weeks' time. But before we talk about um, the current crop, just to check in with you, Dennis, what's the, what's the update with the injury? Um, yeah, I suppose I got a bit of a, a, a bit of a shock in August, right? Saying I, I got a bit of a tear in my Achilles tendon. So um, that was, I suppose, mid August, I think it was. Um, we played a few friendly games in, in in football during that period, but I suppose it was just awful timing, really, as such. So I've actually missed the whole campaign. Um, so I look, I'm, I'm plugging away with regards to my my rehab on it. Um, whether I get back up playing, I don't know. Really, been honest. Um, I suppose uh, time is not on my side certainly because uh, this actually is, it, it takes a while to heal. Um, so look, we'll keep going. Look, if I if I manage to get out in the pitch at some stages here, it'd be brilliant. Um, so look, as long as they keep winning, it gives, gives me hope anyway, I suppose. So uh, delighted to see them still in it anyway. So it's great to be departed in some way anyway, you know. You've had a front row seat in this clan jersey that's seen them first come out of the group stage, then beat a season to header team, and then on Sunday beat a Douglas team that was a top, the top ranked team from the group stage. So what's impressed you most about clans run to the county final? I suppose, uh, I suppose, look. In, in certain regards, like if we're looking back at the last few years, like you probably would have said that there was more in the group of players, certainly, like because look, there's no question about it. Like there's a lot of fellas who were the county jersey down through the years. And I suppose we would have, you know, you'd expect a lot more from, from the group. Um, this year, I suppose, is the, the, the best thing, really, I suppose, as such is that it was, you know, it has come to fruition finally. And there's been a, a lot of improvement game on game, I suppose, within, within the setup that you would be quite pleased with. Um, and I suppose when you are hit with, with moments that are sticky, this the lads are, are, are reacting to it very positively. Like, you know, even to do Hallow game there, going back to that, you know, you're six points down, you know, you know, it's it, you're, you're down the barrel of a country, like, and the lads, uh, you know, to react that and, and pull it out of the fire was, was brilliant to get to seven points in the shot. And then the Douglas game, even the last day, like, you know, there's a bit of a sticky patch, you know, at, in the second half, you know, and they're managing the game very well at the moment. And uh, it's 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 sign of maturity, really, the team, which is very pleasing to see, you know. What has changed this year? So, Dennis, I was talking to Liam Donovan before the, the semi-final, and he was saying that the players are taking on a lot more accountability this year for themselves, that this is very much the players. Like, he was saying from his own point of view, he was, I'm sick of losing, you know, I, I, I want to win. And, and you look at, the, at this clan team, like you mentioned, there's so many good players, like inter-county caliber players. Look at the back seven. Six of that back seven have played inter-county with Cork at, at, at one level or another. So you can, you can see the quality there. So... How how come this year is different to what we've seen in, over the last couple of, couple of years? I think it's just that. I think Liam's spot on. I think I think really it is it is down to the players. And um, I'd say if you were probably asking Holly himself, he'd probably say the same thing. Um, I think they've great. They've, they've certainly taken a greater ownership to it. You know, um, and, and they know they've risen standards themselves. Um, and uh, I suppose that's the most pleasing aspect for us, as as you know, as people looking on. In that finally, you know, it was, it was a successful group looking at them coming up through the underage ranks and then you're seeing them wearing the red jersey and you're saying, you know, um, when is the time for this team? And uh, it's certainly coming together now. But I think it really is down to them and what they've put into it. And there have been times in the year we were kind of questioning, saying, you know, are we going back to, to times where we're like, look, there's no doubt about it, like we've got fair, um, I suppose, tough periods of time down through the years you know this group has been through a lot 
Um, I've been part of it just as much as anybody else. And uh, but you were kind of thinking, are we going to go? Are we going back to that? You know, in parts of the year, there was times during the summer there that we were kind of looking at ourselves saying, oh, where's this year going to go? But I suppose there was kind of a, a, a bit of a turning point maybe before the, the championship started itself that we kind of had to knock it down and, you know, standards might have been slipping and, and it was down to the players, you know, and, and they've, they've put in a huge amount of effort and it's all, all credit to them really. Um, and I'm delighted for them to, 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 you know, to, to be getting the just awards now, you know. There's been, big, there's been some big moments in this campaign that kind of highlight the growth and development and maturity of this clan team. Let's go back to the group stage for a second. That game against Bell and Colleague, when Clan beat Bell and Collig. If you go back 12 months previously, Bell and Collig beat Clan in, in, the, in the same game. So just taking those two games alone, 12 months apart, you could see how the 2021 version of Clan is a better and more mature outfit than the 2020 version. So that game, that winning against Bell and Collig, which booked Clan's place in the, in the knockout stages, that was an important moment for this team. It was huge, yeah. Look, look I suppose we've always kind of a you'd always allude to, to the fact with, with clan isn't that like the last few years if you're taking the last five six seven eight years maybe we haven't probably beaten a team that would have been up there you know in the semi-finals and finals you know um, um and i suppose that was a huge win for the team for this group and um especially the manner of the victory just to eke it out by a point but it was it was a huge um result um but i suppose Sometimes we kind of forget it was the last last year. So we had we've had that, our injury problems too, and it just seems this year that the group are out there together. Finally, uh, you know, there's always somebody seems to be missing of, of the group that are wearing that 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 car jersey and the group that really drive this. Um, so I suppose we've had a bit of luck there in that regard, certainly. You know, and um, what 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 what's transpired has been a huge result against Ballin Colleague. And I obviously, look, the, the Bars match in the first group game was, was a learning curve, certainly for us. But the Duhalo game and following on to the Douglas game, you know, they, they have been real mature performances by this group of players. And um, it's just brilliant to see all of the players that you want out there being out there, you know, and fit. So there has certainly been a bit of a luck in comparison to other years, you know. But you could see the momentum building as well, like you said, mm. from that Ballon Collar game. That, okay, that, that game against Bars at the group stage. Both of you already knew you were true, so there wasn't much on, on, on the line in that game. But then going to do hello, beat a good to hello team. But not only that, to show the character and grit to come back from six points down and win another tough game. And then against a the Douglas team on, on Sunday to beat another top side like that. So momentum is awarded associated with this clan team right now. But, but it, it's building and you can see that the team is getting better and better. And would it be fair to say, Dennis, that the performance against Douglas on Sunday was the best of the campaign so far? All would have a shadow of a doubt, yeah. I think that, that that 25 minutes, look, I suppose we didn't probably get the greatest of starts, really. I suppose they just for three points, I think uh, the hand running uh, fell at our centre forward, we got a few scores, and uh, it wasn't the ideal start, but certainly the reaction was something that you would be very proud of. The lads, uh, I thought some of the football there in the first half played was, was outstanding, you know, um, real slick passing, good football, moving first time exactly how we want to play, um, breaking out of the defence at pace. Um, it was something that was um, was definitely something that was uh, we haven't seen all season from the group, and uh, it was very pleasing to watch. You know, and there were heroes all over the field from from Mark White and Gold, who's who's a revelation as, as a sweeper keeper. Even though I say your heart in your, in your mouth sometimes when he when he's bursting up the field, but from from Tom Clancy fullback, obviously Liam Donovan and Sean White had, had superb games as well. Um, Sean McAvoy with four points in play, Ross Mannix with. With two points from play, even Joe Grimes in the centre did a, did a great job at Hartnett, kind of negating his influence. Um, Darryl O'Shea popped up with six points, five from freeze. Like you could name check everyone who started and everyone came on. Like it was that kind of complete performance that you're looking for at this time of the year. Yeah, it was certainly the collective performance that you wanted. You know, at this stage, and I suppose it shows how far this had, had so far the group have come that they can deliver. A, you know, at this point of the season, a performance like that. You know. Um, as I said, alluded earlier, like that 25 minutes spell was brilliant football. But the most important thing, really, is that you know, the second half there was going to be a, a patch that they would have you know, they'd, have, they'd, have, they'd hit their purple patch, but it was just a case of managing it. And I thought we did that very well as well. Like, we showed a very good maturity there as well to um to get through it. But um, no, certainly performances all over the field, um, and exactly what you want at this stage of the year. And I suppose you're trying to. You're always looking for that complete performance. You know, there's times or the probably things that you know we point out to, that we can work on too. You know, for the final because we we'll have to be at our very best to have any hope against the Bears really in the next day out. You know, what I like about this clan team too, like that back seven that I mentioned earlier, um, 
so miserly, so good the last day, some huge turnovers. Like there's fierce experience back there. And like we said, fellas who've worn the, the, kind of the Cork jersey at various intercounter levels. But when you have a defence like that and the rest of the team has so much trust in that defence, it's a great platform to build on then. Yeah, I know. There's definitely a solid foundation there. As you said, look, I was a six or a seven or, or have worn Cork jerseys. Um, and uh, like really capable of, of going man on man, you know what I mean? And I'd have no... You know, I had very, a very, very high confidence in the defence back there. You know, in fairness to them, um, and they've shown it all year. You know, I suppose um, we, we've been we've been hard to to score against, and I suppose goal scoring opportunities have been few and far between. We've we've conceded we've been conceding few uh, far far between as goal scoring opportunities. Excuse me, but like the best thing about it is is that platform it's created for us and that confidence that is building within the team. You know, so I'm um, certainly very pleased in you. Reid Hall, you were on the podcast last week when we were previewing the, the games and I asked him about, um, I suppose, the, the disparity or the distance between Dar Roche as the top scorer and, and the next kind of the McAvoy's and, and, and the Mannix's. I was saying, do Clan need their forwards, more forwards to chip in with more scores just to take some of the pressure off Dar Roche? And we saw that on Sunday. Um, like I said earlier, McAvoy got four points, Ross Mannix got two points. Um, and that was great to see as well, to, to see those two players and players like that stand up on the big occasion on the big stage in the county semi-final and deliver like that. So it just it, it, it just shows a scoring threat that this clan team does possess. Absolutely. And I suppose we never doubted their ability, really. I, but I, I actually don't think as a collective, we probably helped the two lads, to be honest, because especially the Rohallow game, anyway, like going through the middle third, we were very, very slow and moving the ball. And I suppose we were doing the lads no favours and sides, certainly. So, so that was something that we wanted to to do um, against Douglas and you know we got the just awards and the lads at the business and, and, and on the scoreboard you know and there's no doubt doubt in their ability whatsoever it was just a case of getting the ball a bit quicker to them to do the damage you know and the reward now is a county final against the Bears in just less than two weeks time back up in, in Parky Cueven it, it, it's it's interesting how, how, how sport works kind of when you look back to Clans last county final appearance was back in 2009 and Clan beat the Bears um, in, in that game and Harley O'Neill was managing Clan like he is now. And just on Harley for, for a second, what is it about, about Harley that brings the best out of players? It, it's, it's a tough one, actually. Um, geez, I suppose if you asked him, he'd probably say a bit of luck. I'd say that he gets a long way. Um, he's a very modest, stone torque kind of character. Um, you know, puts everything back on the players. Like, there's, there's no applaud. It's like he's, he's, he's uh, a very... A passionate man, I suppose, a very passionate for Clan County football, you know. Um, I suppose he's he's played with Clan. Um, you know, he's had some some tough losses with Clan County, you know, in county finals in the eighties. Um, he's been a mentor obviously in ninety six, he's managing us in 09. So I suppose it's that respect garnered from all those experiences really that comes across in any time he speaks, you know. When Holly speaks, you you tend to listen, you know. Um so and he's a very, very good communicator. Like he, he deals in detail, and he's a way of playing the game. You know, he's a, he's a, he's his idea of playing the game, and he gets that across very well. You know, so um, I think it's a bit of a mix of all those kind of little bits. Um, but certainly, he's a he's he's a man that brings a huge passion to the to the to the group and um, commands a serious respect. You know, uh, clan selector Owen Ryan was telling me after the do um, do hello game that clan were in bonus territory, and then Sunday after the win against Douglas, I said. Where are Clan now when he said bonus, bonus territory, getting through to the, to the county football final. But now there's two teams left standing. It's Clan of and the Bears. It's, it's a winner-take-all match. Like kind of The Bears will win as favourites, but Clan are there too, and they're deservedly there as well. So it's, um, it's, a, it's great to see Clan back here, and Clan have more than a fighter's chance in this game. Yeah, look, I suppose there's no talking about it. Like we're going to be huge underdogs, you know. Um, there's no doubt. Look, the Bears are, are, are a quality outfit. Um, they've been there, you know, very recently in, in eight and eighteen. You know, they've walked up the steps. They've lost the final in seventeen. Um, last year they lost some penalties to the Haven. Like that's a rough way to lose any any game, you know. Um, they're a seasoned outfit. Like they've been there, and a lot of their players have that experience. If that's going to stand to them. Usually, it's going to be a massive test for us. Um, a lot of this group are. I haven't played actually none of the none of the team have played a final before. So it's 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 new. It's, it's it is certainly bonus bonus territory. I would certainly agree with Owen on that one. Um the, the aim for us this year was to get out of the group. I, I, everything from that is has been has been a bonus. And I think the most uh, 
pleasing aspect looking on is that fellas are enjoying their football and that was the main goal of this year just to enjoy it play with a smile on their face and just the mind of the scoreboard reads just keep going and and that's exactly what how they're playing it and um 100 it's a it's a it's a it's there for the taking you know um but um all we'll be looking for is a performance and if you perform we'll give ourselves a chance that's all and finally Dennis and bigger picture regardless of what happens in the final in a couple of weeks time the, the clan footballers now know that when they put in the effort and they all come together that they've shown what they're capable of doing they've shown that they're capable of getting to the business end of a of a county premier senior football championship so even for next year the year after the year after like they've put there's building blocks in place now for this clan team to come back next year and the year after the year after so bigger picture like the positives there's positives to take in to the next couple of seasons from this Absolutely, actually, like, you know, you're going to look in down to underage, like, you know, there's a lot of young fellas there looking on there yesterday, and um, like they haven't seen a successful clan side, you know, it's a long time, 12 years, um, you know, even even that day out alone, like, you're you're inspiring younger people to, to put on the jersey and keep at it, you know, so it's on to the next generation, you know, to to, to keep it going, but um, but I'd say from, for, for this group, it's certainly it's going to be a huge confidence builder this season and, and to show, you know, that they can do it when the work is put in. Um, but um, that, that's, the, that's the main thing really for, 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 for this group is that it, the, the, just the confidence and that it garners from it, that they're garnering from it. And just, uh, I suppose, what, what they're getting out of it is, you know, they've put in the hard work and they're getting the just award for it. So, so hopefully, hopefully, Clan will scale the summit in a couple of weeks time. Hopefully, we'll see you back in the pitch. Uh, before too long, Sue Dennis, um, thanks for joining us on the podcast. No matter. Thank you very much, Karen. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. On Saturday at 5 pm in Park, Equive to kill Britain hurlers go in search of the lower intermediate county title when they take on Liz Gould. In a few moments, we're going to chat to Nick O'Donovan, who's a member of the Kill Britain team who will be going in search of that title on Saturday. And Kieran, this is a huge, huge game for Kilbritton and their manager, Jamie Wall, because they've been working towards this for a number of years now. Not only is Nick a player on Kilbritton, Jack, he's the captain, fantastic. He's the man who's, who's going to lead the way for Kilbritton and hopefully touch wood, he'll be the man lifting um, lifting the cup on, on Saturday evening up in Parky Cueve. Like you said, huge game for Kilbritton back in the county final. And uh, I was looking back at the last time during the county final was the 2010 county intermediate final and they still have so many links from then to now including Nico Donovan um, when you think Jamie Wall who's now the court manager he was 17 at the time and he scored a 57 minute goal in the replay um, when they when they beat Ballin, Ballin Hasek in Parky Ring and now he's the man trying to mastermind um, Kilbritton's county final success hopefully this this um this Saturday and Kilbritton have been in top form in this uh, in this year's county championship campaign they topped their group and they were um, good, good and deserving winners over tracked in, in the semi final as well. So their 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 form is quite good. Um, chatting to Jamie before the semi final, uh, we touched on how Kilbritton's score average is is well up on last year. In three championship games, in their three group games in in this season, they scored more than in their four championship games last year. So um, it just shows you that, that Kilbritton are more potent going forward this year, but they're still very, very miserly in defence. Um, in the group stages, they're the second best defence there. So um, they they have a very solid platform to build on. Um, they have they have experience in buckets in that team, the likes of Ross Cash- Cashman and Morris Sexton, um, who were two of the fellas involved back in 2010, Damien Desmond, another fella uh, as well. And, even, and there's even a couple of more fellas besides that. So they have experience to draw on. They're, they're, in, they're in good form. Huge challenge against a very good Liz Gould team. There's no getting away that Liz Gould are... A, they'll be the best team that Kilbritton have faced this year. But Kilbritton are, are playing with a pep in their steps. Um, and even you'd hear from Nick now, there's just a confidence in the team and they're they're enjoying their hurling right now. And I, I think that's very important. And I think Jamie Walls had a huge part to play in that. He's just brought... Um, but that that joy and that fun element back to to, to kill Britain hurling and they're 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 playing with a smile on their face. They're going out there and they're giving performances and they're they're playing good hurling. So um, the plan is and the hope is that they'll do it again on on Saturday and we'll have a, another county title coming back to West Cork on Saturday night. We're joined now on the podcast by Kill Britain hurling captain Nico Donovan to look ahead to a huge uh, Super Saturday for the club in the Lower Intermediate Hurling Championship final. Um, in Parky Cueve, 
under lights against Liz Gould. It's a it's 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 a it's a big occasion, Nick. So what's this like the week of a county final? We're a couple of days out now from from Saturday. So how do you prepare for a game like this? Well, I suppose Kieran, like, look first of all, I suppose it's eleven years now since we were last in the county final. Um, myself, I was I was seventeen then, and I was kind of look, I was nowhere near making the team. I were kind of invited onto the panel more to kind of make up numbers in training, which we we thought would happen. It was going to be this way every year. And look, we did we did have a few good years, all right. But I suppose since then, it's been you know eleven years. Like I said, it's a long time. I think we're kind of mixing between, I suppose, enjoying it and kind of letting the occasion soak in, but also kind of getting on with our job. You know, we have a job to do on Saturday. The, the job is to win. We've nothing won yet. So, you know, we're kind of mixing between jo- enjoying the occasion, making the most of the build-up, but also kind of trying to focus our minds to the job we need to do. How important is it to enjoy a week like this? Like you said, Kilbritton's last county final, that was, that, that was back in 2010 against, against Ballon Hassig, and 11 years ago, like you said. So these don't come around too often. So, like... Uh, uh, this is a huge, huge game on Saturday. But as players, you probably want just to enjoy the build-up as well as much as you possibly can. That's it. Look, I suppose, look, what Joe, what else do Joe club players train for only to make county finals regardless of what grade you're playing at? And then I suppose, <laughs> as we found the last few weeks, there probably is that bit of added pressure, you know, there, it is a big occasion. And like I say, you, you want to win, you know. You don't want to be the loser on county final day. But I suppose it is just trying to focus your mind yourself to remember, look, you know, this is why I train, this is why we did the running in the bad weather, this is why we you know, we make sacrifices, I suppose, is to enjoy the occasion. And also not even the occasion itself, but enjoy training. Like it's great to have a buzz around you know, the last few years. It's that's probably been missing from us when we've been training in Kilberton, but to get that buzz back and to be positive, Joe. You know, oftentimes you're training this time of year it can be for a relegation battle or something, but to actually be in a, the business end of the championship is great. So it's it's just I suppose make a conscious effort to enjoy it, you know. Like you mentioned too, back in back in 2010, when the county intermediate hurling championship beat Ben and Hassig, won 12 to 11 points in a replay. I think that was Park Your Ring. And I was looking back at that at that game 11 years ago, and there's still huge links between that 2010 team and the current crop. Like current crop, obviously you're there, uh, the likes of uh, Morris Sexton, Ross Cashman, Tommy Harrington, uh, Connor Maloney, um, Aaron Aaron Hayes. Jamie Wall scored the sort of scored the goal 57 minutes against Ben Hassig and he's the manager now. So um, there is like like I said there there is very strong links. Like there's still a lot of players from 2010 still involved in the in the current setup. That's very right, Kieran, yeah. And I suppose like, we're, we are it's great to have that experience, you know. Even like we say Damien Desmond knows well would have played that day. And like we're kind of looking to those I, <laughs> the older heads, I suppose, as you call them, maybe to kind of and they do in fairness, they're they're a wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge and um I suppose we, you know, it would be remiss of us to not to acknowledge that that these fellas have been there, they've been successful before. So to to draw on that experience now would hopefully will help us on the big day on Saturday. Now, what are your own recollections of that, that county final replay eleven years ago? I suppose, like I said, kind of seventeen. It's hard to to think straight at all, but I suppose it was just I I knew I wouldn't figure it. I was down the lower end of the panel, so I was kind of. In that sense, it was easier for me to enjoy the the occasion, like to open Parky Keeve, a big day. A uh, big crowd there, and like you know, I suppose at, I was only just out of underage hurling then. So these guys were my heroes, really. A lot of seeing these fellas play, like Vince O'Brien, Rossi, Joy. I even know how to play to Jamie all the way up. Like Joy, he was about a talented player. Like you know, so it was, it was for us. It was a huge occasion to go to a replay. It was kind of it was very dramatic, and then to come back in the celebrations in the village after, like were just amazing. And we, we thought that was going to be the way every year. Once a year, we'd have those big days. And hopefully, fingers crossed and touch wood, you're going to have those celebrations this weekend if it all goes to the plan on Saturday evening. But let's look at Kill Britain's run to, to, to this county final. You've been so, so in, in, in impressive. I remember I was talking to Jamie Wall um, before your before your, your semi final. And even just, just that, boys, like you're scoring a lot more this year. Like you're still very tight in defence. Like everything seems to be coming t- together this year. Kind of the blocks you put in place last year, you've now built in them. And you feel you're an even better version of, of the team now? I, yeah, I would talk here, and I suppose like um, like Joe Jamie is great for focusing the minds. You know, like we have our jobs to do, and we do them. It's kind of breaks down very kind of simplistic fashion. Look, you know, we kind of concentrate on the performance, and like you know, regardless of whether the shots are going over the bar or whether they're going wide, Joe, it's our job to continue to do the right thing. You know, to be very that kind of singular focus on doing the right thing. Look, you know, I suppose. We've had good results and we're, we are happy with our results, you know, but at the same time, we have, we've nothing won yet. So, you know, those results, uh, they come for nothing if we don't show up on Saturday on the big day. Looking at the performances so far, like obviously, uh, Argentine Rangers, 19 points, scored 224 against 
against Tripsy, big win against Grenade in against, against Tracton in the semi final, another impressive performance. Does anyone stand out for you more than another? Um, I suppose, look, we against Tim Lee, kind of a local battle. We, you know, all the talk before, and it was with Tim League, we're missing a lot of players, and they, like, they, they are a strong team. And, you know, I'm sure next year, no, again, they'll have a big say to say in the championship. Um, it was, a, I think, we had a poor performance in the first half, bad, kind of bad habits. We weren't ready for that championship battle, which was, there's no excuses there. We should have been, you know, we weren't ready. Tim League brought a great intensity, but I think we kind of, at half time, we regrouped and we kind of gathered ourselves, composed ourselves, and it was satisfying just to see that we just got the job done. We got over the line, we kept doing the right things, and, you know, to the process and like, so do, like I said just doing the right things Like I said you've been fierce and impressive so far Nick and you won all your three group games and the top team in the group stage and one of the, the rewards for that is you got a boy straight through to the semi-final so you had a four week gap there to manage between the group stage and the semi-final so how did you manage that just so you wouldn't lose your age going into that game against Tracton? Well I, I suppose like firstly as soon as the, the group stage was over we just we kind of took we kind of unwinded a small bit, like, you know, we acknowledged like, like four weeks, there was no point going straight into hard training and peaking again maybe too soon. So we kind of took our break. And then once we had our break, it was a very short break, of course, just maybe one or two nights off. And then we were back at it again, kind of like, you know, building up and building up and kind of maintaining a focus, kind of going through it step by step, taking each training as it came, keeping if we, we had a few challenge games and just taking the, each challenge game on its own merits, you know, and we kind of built ourselves up then again for the, for the semi-final against Tracton, and then we kept, felt like even though they had that extra game, they played Milford, we knew that we were, you know, even though they had that extra championship game, we knew that we weren't going to come in cold to that match. Uh, we mentioned Jamie Wall, obviously he's, he's manager of this team, a, a former teammate, and we got the goal back in 2010. What's Jamie like as a, as a manager? Uh, he, he's, he's brilliant, you know, we're, we're delighted to have him. It's, uh, it was our, our luck, really, to have him, to be honest. Um, like, look, he was a really talented player, you know, one of the best that I, I was, it was an honour to play against him, really, when we were younger, like, the things he could do, like, he's a very, you know, he's a smart guy, you know, he's a confidence guy, and I think that, like, you know, all those put together has the makings of a great manager and a great coach, um, you know, and I think what it is, it's just, it's very simplistic, very straightforward, and it's practical, mm-hmm. and something that's easy for the players to buy into, you know, there's no cliches being thrown around, you know, no kind of lazy stereotypes or anything like that, it's just very straightforward, these are, like, you know, he sets standards, and you meet those standards. And he, he definitely keeps you on, on your toes, you know, kind of like you said there, he sets very high standards. So I presume the competition within the panel this season is just off the charts. Yeah, it, it is fantastic. Yeah, every position, like, you know, we'd, we'd all be looking over our shoulders at the fellas on the bench, you know, and I'm sure if they're enjoyed through injuries or, you know, maybe fellas have a bad day, the next fella to come in will do as equally as a good a job. You know, having a huge, we've had good numbers, you know, was something we, we, we were lacking, I suppose, or missing over the, the few years, maybe when we were play, weren't playing that well at the intermediate grade. But, you know, now to have a big, strong panel and our, our second team, our junior B team, are doing very well. They're unlucky to lose at the weekend, you know, and that has really driven on, driven us on, you know, big, big numbers is important, I think. And the playing park in Cleveland Saturday night, like Cork GA headquarters, like the under lights, like the pitch is looking fantastic. It's the it's the perfect platform for a game like this. How much are, are you all looking forward to showing what you can do on a pitch like that? I you you hugely looking forward to the yeah, edge. You know, it's a, if there was a, an added incentive needed, then we were definitely given one. You know, just like sure, it's an amazing stadium. We've all been to see matches there, like but just to actually play there in a county final, like it's it's what it's why you train. You know, it's why you play hurling. Like it's the it's the pinnacle, really. Kilbritton at the club, like Kilbritton's hurling country. I think Jamie Wall said in his in his quotes after the, the semi final win. How much would it mean to you all involved to to get your hands on the cup on, on Saturday night? Joe, it would be huge, Kieran. To be honest, because look, we had that su- success, you know, eleven years ago, and we were quite competitive at the Premier Intermediate grade for a few years, and then look, I suppose we lost a few players, and maybe standards slipped in Kilbritton a small, but ended up, and we had a very poor run a few years ago where we ended up getting regraded down to the lower intermediate. And that was something we were very, we were disappointed with. We felt like we didn't give the people of Kilbritton a team to get behind. We weren't proud of ourselves, Joe. We weren't carrying ourselves well on the pitch. We weren't representing what we, the kind of values we have. So to actually kind of turn it around that, and even, it is at, even if it is at the lower intermediate grade, you know, just actually do the right thing and kind of give the people of Kilbritton, Joe, a, a team to get behind. So, like, I suppose winning on Saturday would be a, a representation and it would be very satisfying for us you know, to show kind of reward the, the effort that we think we've put in and kind of getting things back on track. Can you pinpoint, Nick, the moment of the game or the season when things started to turn around, when things started to look up for Kilbritton again? Uh, to be honest, Kieran, it's hard to actually pinpoint a moment more of a, I suppose, a series of moments maybe, like, you know, 
even to kind of training sh- sessions where as fellas might have walked from drill to drill job before, something as simple as that, where fellas are like, without even being reminded, they're jogging from drill to drill, they're bringing intensity. I think there was um, probably in our championship matches, we might have lacked that ability to stand up to the physical contact. You know, we, we backed our, our fitness, we backed our hurling ability, but I think, you know, a championship game, especially the start of any championship game, it's chaos. Like, you know, there's a, it's a huge physical battle regardless of what grade you're playing at. There's that kind of, there's that chaotic element. And I don't think in our first few matches, maybe Tim League and Dripsy, we, we weren't ready for that. And I think there was just a training where whatever drill or small-sided game we were doing, it just felt like, yeah, we were just getting that extra bit stuck in that we all knew as players ourselves in the management of the course that we needed that we were going to go nowhere if we were going to be beaten in that in that sense in the physical battle, you know. And all your hard work, like I said earlier, fingers crossed and touch wood, it all comes to fruition with the with the result we're all we all want on, on, on Saturday evening. Best of luck, Nick. Hope it all works out. Thanks very much, Kieran. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast and Kieran. Judging by our discussion at the top of the show, I'm assuming this week's Southern Star is going to be one of the best, if not the best, yet. And it's going to be packed full of GAA club action. Oh, this week's Star is incredible. Just looking, it's it's a working progress right now. So I'm, I'm up against it for the, for the deadline on Wednesday, but it is packed with all the big... GA stories from last weekend. We've pages upon pages upon pages of GA reports, reaction, analysis, comment. Um, obviously, it's the games we've touched on so far. The clan getting through to the county final. Haven's heartbreak in their county semi final. The Haven ladies winning their their county final. Randall's winning a county final. And all those games have two page spreads each. So, like, it's well worth picking up the star for those alone. It's the best coverage of of those games. And as well as that, we've big coverage of of Ireland and Donnie's and the Orhan junior footballers fallers in their junior A um, semi-final on Tuesday night. We have a two-page preview of Kilbritton against Liz Gould, including a, a very good interview with Mara Sexton. We have Jamie Wall's thoughts as well. Just going down a small bit further, just want to say congrats to McCroom teenager Erica O'Shea and Hannah Luna. They were two Cork All-Stars when the Ladies Football All-Stars were announced um, last Saturday night. And Erica is only 19, her second year on the Cork panel, but um, she's been a superb addition to the Cork team. She's stepped, last year she was impressive, this year she was even more impressive. And now she has an, an All-Star, so we have coverage of that. And then Skull soccer star Ronan Hurley has signed on with Cork City for the 2022 season. So we've news on that and a lot, lot more. So it's 28 pages. It's packed. It's creaking. But it's a it's a great few weeks for West Cork Sport. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it all justice across the paper and online over the coming weeks as the season reaches its climax. But that's all we have for this week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, as always. We'll be back at the same time next week. And remember, if you enjoy these shows, please, and I say that with sincerity, please make sure to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Slán